And welcome back, back everybody, to Handicap Hustle. I am your host, Jim Breslow, and we have the great Richard Frazier of Fraze Wins on the line with us to go over the most recent NFL weekend, uh, his fourth consecutive non-losing weekend, we can say. He went one and one this past weekend, only gave out two picks, uh, but that does still bring his overall record to and a very impressive eight and three. So, Rich, welcome back. Looking forward to talking about the uh, the, the weekend games. But first, I want to cover uh, what just happened in, in baseball because I think it's really interesting. Uh, one of the craziest setups I've ever seen. We've got a whole new playoff system now for baseball that I'm still trying to figure out how it works. But today we had a makeup doubleheader between the Atlanta Braves and the New York Mets, where the only way both teams don't go in is if one of the teams sweeps this doubleheader. So whoever wins the first game is in, doesn't even need to play the second game. It's a throwaway game, but the team that loses absolutely needs to win the second game. Yes. Uh, Mets won the first game, so that means the Braves need to win the second game or the Arizona Diamondbacks slip in their spot. Right. So, and and I think both teams have they have to play a game tomorrow because tomorrow starts this new wild card three game playoff that they're doing. So yeah. obviously, the winner of the game, in this case the Mets, is going to rest all their players, rest their their pitchers for sure and essentially give away the game to the other team. So I just managed to get down a little uh, wager on the Atlanta Braves, minus a run and a half, minus 200. Um, that, that sounds good in theory. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I mean, you know, uh, there, there, there's pressure on them, clearly, and it would be the most embarrassing loss in the history of baseball if they were to lose to a a, a team that didn't need to win and was resting all their players. But again, I, I can't imagine that the Mets are going to be even throwing up their regular pitchers in this game. I think they're going to be putting, you know, everyday players on the mound to uh, th throw lollipops to the Braves. Well, I mean, we could look at yesterday's schedule where uh, the game meant nothing to the Yankees versus the Pirates, but the Yankees still won. The game meant nothing for the Phillies, but the Phillies still won as well. So, um, yeah, like I said, in, in theory, that's what we think will happen, but you never know. All right, now you're making me nervous all of a sudden about my bet. Anyway, I think it's... I think it's a lock. It's it's almost a, a, as big a lock as a Richard Frazier NFL pick is a lock at eight and three. So let's go over this. We're doing the show uh, on a Monday so we can release it earlier. You didn't have any picks tonight on the Monday night games. If we got time, we can talk about these Monday night games. Uh, it'd just be fun to hear if you have any leans on these two Monday night games. But let, let's start with going over uh, the picks. So, First of all, you took Atlanta at home against New Orleans, minus two and a half. This is the second time that you've picked Atlanta this year. You made me and all of your Las Vegas customers very nervous with that last Atlanta bet because I think wasn't that the game where they were playing on a Monday night at Philadelphia? Correct. Yeah. And uh, I said, and I think all your guys said, oh, my gosh, Philly is not going to lose their home opener on a Monday night and certainly not going to lose it to the Falcons. We, we we bitched and moaned about that play, but it came through for you. Uh, yeah, I mean, the the system is designed to, to, to try to find uh, teams that are – do for a game playing at their optimum performance uh, and hopefully catch a team that might be uh, a little flat. And uh, um, yesterday's game um, and when you're, when you're laying anything less than three points and you, you still win the game, but you don't cover the game. I mean, there's about a 10% chance of that happening. Yeah, very and, rare. Me, meaning yeah. you, you won the game only by one or two points, in, in which case that, that's the only way that you can lose on Atlanta. 
Right. And uh, it, it sure looked like Atlanta was a, uh, was a lock to, to cover that game when they stopped the saints on a fourth down play down at their goal line. At that point, all they need to do basically is pick up a first down and, uh, and they're probably good to go. Uh, but they, uh, they, they weren't able to pick up a first down punted from deep in their, their own zone and uh, had to punt and give New Orleans good field position. So what I see again and again this whole thing about just picking up a first down where these teams get so focused on running the clock or getting the other team to burn their timeouts and they'll do the three running plays up the middle where they get two yards and then they get two yards and then we know they're about to get another two yards and punt the ball away making sure like I said either that they run the clock or that they exhaust the other team's timeouts when just keep running your offense, guys, you need to get a first down or maybe two first downs and the game is over. I'm, I'm trying to remember which game I saw recently, which was the exact same thing. Um, I think it was the uh, maybe in the Jets game, which was just a total debacle for um, for Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, they ended up missing a field goal at the end. Um, yeah. but the, the, the Broncos had given them the ball back, I think in a similar circumstance where the Broncos just needed to get one first down to run out the clock. Instead, they play ultra conservative, give the ball right back to the jets. All they need is a couple pass plays to get into field goal range. And that's similar to what happened in the Saints Atlanta game where they ended up handing them the ball back with plenty of time in the Saints. Um, actually, didn't they come down and they, they scored a touchdown or a field goal? I forget to take the lead. I think it was a uh, touchdown. Uh, which game are you referring to? The the, the Saints Falcons game. Uh yeah, the uh the, the Saints ended up scoring a touchdown, uh, but they left a lot of time on the clock and, and the Falcons went down and, and kicked the field goal to win the game by two. Right. Right. So. Yeah, they need they needed a touchdown because they were down by six, right? They score the touchdown, kick the extra point, take the lead by one. Atlanta's got the ball back now with about a minute to go. You're watching the game probably thinking I'm screwed because uh, we're giving up two and a half and it's highly unlikely they're going to go down and score a touchdown. So instead, they're trying to get into field goal range. I was watching the game very intently because, of course, like always, Rich, I bet your games. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh I guess I guess the last couple of weeks I haven't. However, <laughs> this week I did and I have got no complaints, Rich, because you're not going to believe this, but I bought the half point. So I, well, I, had, funny, I had Atlanta funny, minus two. Funny you should mention that. When I gave that game out on Friday, um, I did not have any two available to me in town. The the, the best number was, was two and a half. But I, I, I do have uh, a few clients that uh, uh, deal with independent bookmakers and uh, – Independent bookmakers did have that uh, uh, line at two points, uh, minus one fifteen. Interesting. So, well, yeah, I never saw I never saw it at two, but what happened with me was I saw it at minus one forty to take the Falcons straight up, and I looked at that and I thought, oh, that's not that much more to lay just to get them straight up. And I went I went to place that bet. And then it had it, it had moved between the time I decided to place it, which would have made me a winner if I had placed that bet, right? <clears throat> it had moved to 145. I'm like, ah, damn. So I just got mad. Then I went back, and instead of taking the, the Falcon straight up, I just bought the half point to minus two. Part of my thinking always in taking it from a two and a half down to a two from any half down is that now you're at least it's going to be a push. You're not going to lose on that number. You're not going to lose plus the juice. It seems like a smart play. And and even though two and a half to two doesn't sound like much, you know, there's a lot of close games that are decided by one or two points. All those half points to me are very tempting to take, obviously, especially if you're looking at taking it off of a three, three and a half or a seven, seven and a half. Well, every half point counts. Like I said, e even if there's a less than 10% chance of it happening uh, over the course of a season, we're talking about maybe a hundred plays. So um, yeah, it, I mean, it's going to come into play sooner or later. And yeah. Well, that's why you always tell your, you always tell your players to, you know, try and get the best line 
you can, be, uh, you know, for exactly the reason you're stating. I mean, your, your whole methodology is about finding lines that are a little bit off of where they should be by a, a point or two, right? I mean, right. that's that's the difference between winning and losing. So <clears throat> do, do the extra work. If you're in Vegas, go up and down the strip a little bit and see if you can find the guy offering it um, at two. So, yeah, I'm not even sure we should count that as a loss for you, Rich, but because you're doing so well, we're going to put it in the loss column. I'd love to put it in the tie column for you, which will put you at eight, two, and one. Well, thank you, Jim. That's very generous. <laughs> uh, but I was going to comment about the end of that game because, <clears throat> excuse me, I was I was needing the field goal to tie, and uh, the Falcons were really not in field goal position. I mean, they were at the 40-yard line. They needed another five or ten yards to get this thing into a decent field goal position. And um, who's who's the uh, – it's Kirk Cousins, right? Is the, is the uh, quarterback? Yeah, Kirk Cousins. Yeah, Kirk correct. Cousins, he throws three passes in a row that are like 30-yard passes. They had With no time – he almost connected on two of those, which could have ended resulted in a touchdown. Well, there you go. But it also could have resulted in the end of the game. <clears throat> they had no timeouts left. Yeah. He's throwing the ball 30 yards down the field with like 12 seconds to go where they would have had to run down and spike the ball at the 2015 yard line. I'm not sure they could have been, even been able to do that. And it would have been a chip shot field goal. I don't know why he didn't just try to pick up five or 10 yards, which he didn't do. And they got very, very lucky that Koo hits the longest field goal in his career. I think yeah. perhaps the longest field goal ever kicked in that place. What, what was it like 57 yarder or something? Uh, yesterday's field goal, 58. I think was, was yeah, it, it was a long one, but it, you know, he is one of the most accurate kickers and I have a lot of faith in him. So um they they apparently wasn't too nervous about it yeah well uh you were rooting for the touchdown so i guess you didn't mind those 30 yard passes down there but uh i just wanted the field goal for the tie so we'll let's talk about the next game so you and, and by the way rich only had two picks this weekend <clears throat> explain to us what was going on in the analysis for this past weekend that, that wound up with only two games um looking solid well, there, there's uh, certain benchmarks that I expect uh, each play to meet. And uh, two of those games, the games I gave out, met all of those benchmarks. I had uh, about two, uh, pro probably two other games that, that met some of the benchmarks, but not all of the benchmarks. And um, I, I taught myself – over 20 years ago when I first got into this business that that my rule of thumb would be this that if I give out a game and it loses will I have any regrets and if the answer to that is yes then then I'm not going to give that play out uh so it has to meet each and every one of my benchmarks to be a play and I, I just like I said, those other cu couple games that came close but narrowly missed uh, the the cutoff, I just couldn't give them out. So I only ended up with two. So for the third week, uh, you went three and zero oh last week. So obviously it didn't happen that week. But 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 for the other three weeks, all three weeks you lost your first play in the, in in the AM games here on the West Coast, putting all the pressure on you to deliver in the following games uh, to avoid a, a, a losing weekend. And once again, you came through. This time you had to wait until Sunday night and Baltimore at home against Buffalo uh, for Baltimore to cover. You had them uh, minus two and a half and they blew out Buffalo. Yeah, um, that game, uh, uh, by looking at the final score, yeah, it, it looked like it was an easy win, but you know, if you if you watch that game, uh, much to the to the chagrin of uh, of Todd, the producer, um, Baltimore has this uh, this way of self imploding. Now they're up twenty one three. It seems like they can do whatever they want on the field. They're driving at the end of the first half, which could have just put buffalo in the grave right then and there 
and Lamar Jackson fumbles the ball. Um, fortunately for Baltimore, Buffalo wasn't able to take advantage of that, but they come out in the second half. Uh, Baltimore gets the ball first, goes three and out, gives it to Buffalo. Buffalo marches right down the field, scores a touchdown. Baltimore goes three and out, gives the ball back to Buffalo. Again, they're moving the ball at will down the field, and then Buffalo turned the ball over. And that was the key point of the game. Baltimore ended up scoring off of that Buffalo turnover. And at that point, I felt comfortable. But that game could have very easily been 21-17 early in the third quarter. And, you know, anything can happen at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I liked that pick <clears throat> going into it. Um, Buffalo was coming in 3-0. and kind of due for a letdown game and playing in Baltimore, obviously on a, a primetime game is, is never going to be easy. And uh, I forget was Baltimore. Oh, Baltimore was coming off a win at Dallas, right. For their first win. Um, Anyway, you know, I mean, both teams are going to be very strong this year, but I think, you know, Buffalo was kind of due for a letdown. A letdown, yeah, uh, a letdown. This is the producer talking. A <laughs> letdown. There was no letdown there. Listen, the, I'm surprised you only gave up two and a half, Rich, and I'll tell you why. The game is in Baltimore. It's the blackout game. They called it darkness. Everybody's dressed in black. Everybody's hyped up for the game. It's prime time. Plus, the Orioles are in the playoffs. You guys are just talking about baseball. And while the game is going on in the first quarter, they announced what time the Orioles will be playing on Tuesday, and the entire stadium erupted. And right then and there, you knew there was no way we're gonna we were gonna lose. The energy was top to bottom, start to finish. Everybody was hyped up. I don't care what you say about that fumble; it doesn't matter. Ravens were gonna win that game, or we're gonna win it big. Was that you I seen a picture of on TV rubbing Ray Lewis's feet on that statue outside the that, stadium? That was not me, but I have done that many, many times. <laughs> hey, I just have one question for Todd, the huge Baltimore fan who knew for sure that was a lock win. How much did you put on the game? <laughs> well, unfortunately, I didn't put anything on the game. But I had all these other side bets that were all these little things, you know, little uh, rinky dinky things. Uh, nothing monetary, though. So uh, but we were it was good. And I and I'm definitely going to take full advantage of those winnings mm. over the next couple of weeks. OK. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, he sure got a uh, doesn't put his money where his mouth is, despite having a big mouth when it comes to the Ravens. <laughs> I, I don't I don't know if he loves Baltimore or if he just hates Buffalo. I'm I'm, I'm it, still on third. Day. It's the same. It's the same reaction for both. <laughs> All right, Todd, get off of our show. We're done talking about Baltimore. There you go. So so so, so uh, a, a one in one weekend. Uh, it really should have been a a one zero and one weekend with Atlanta uh, winning by just two, but still it puts them at 73% clip for the season so far, eight and three rich coming on this show every week to face the music good or bad about the fall, the, the prior weekend. And so far it's been pretty much nothing but good. So just a reminder to folks, if you want to get this upcoming week's picks, you got to go to Substack. And that is Handicap Hustle on Substack. Handicap Hustle on Substack. You can subscribe for free for our newsletter. And if you want to get Rich's picks, what are you waiting for? They're just 79 bucks a month to get his usually three picks, minimum two picks per weekend. And so far, you would be way up right now at eight and three. And Rich, by the way, historically does the best toward the middle and end of the season compared to the early games as his analytics analytics are getting better and better. So uh, a 73% start to the season is great for Rich historically, right, Rich? That's correct. So I think we got a few minutes left to just kind of preview the Monday night games. I don't know when this is going to air, so people are going to get a little insight. Uh, perhaps, you know, we're, we're going to talk about these games before they happen and then uh, see how we ended up doing. So Miami and Tennessee, 
Wow, is that the? Er I hope that's the early game because that is a real uh, that's a real snooze of a, of, of a game. Yeah, um, that that is the early game. We have uh, the zero and three Titans with the one and two Dolphins, who's uh, you know completely banged up. Um, what, they, 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 who's their backup quarterback? Tua is out. And who uh, two is out. Uh, I, I think even their backup, Skyler Thompson, got hurt, didn't he? Um, so yet, uh, yet, so, yet, they're still a. Uh, I still they're still a two and a half point favorite at home. I think, right? Yes, yes, they they, they are, and that's that's just because uh, Tennessee's without their starting quarterback as well. Um, so, is there any any lean? This doesn't count as a pick, but you have any lean in that game? Yeah, this game is so ugly it's almost embarrassing to watch um uh what what the old school uh smart guys in vegas taught me that when when a game is a toss-up you're better off taking a dog mm -hmm. um so if we if we use that logic and and by the slightest of hairs uh the algorithm says the same thing the to take the Titans plus the points in this game. Yeah, I'm kind of leaning that way, maybe buying a half, getting it up to three points because it's going to be a dog of a game. It's going to be a low-scoring game probably, so three points could make a difference. Then we've got a really good game, though. We've got Seattle undefeated, 3-0, and at Detroit, 2-1. and A little bit reminiscent of the game last night in the, in the fact that we've got an undefeated team on the road in a primetime game. Uh uh, Seattle probably overperforming at this point. Detroit pretty much where we thought that they would be. Um, but, and I think Detroit is, um, what, giving up four. I am inclined to take Detroit, maybe buy it down to three. <clears throat> what do you say, Rich? I, uh, I agree with you on that, Jim. Again, the, uh, you know, my, my splitting of hairs and these, these uh, numbers, you know, aren't aren't meaning a whole lot to me but just just analyzing this this game as a a normal handicapper would I, I i like the lions at home in this game i think the lions came into this season with huge expectations you know i i think seattle is a little overrated at three and oh uh don't get me wrong. I'm a Geno Smith fan. I watched him ever since he played in college at West Virginia. And he was a backup all these years until uh, Seahawks got rid of Russell Wilson. And then all of a sudden he's this uh, great starter. I, you know, I don't, I don't buy it. Uh, so I, yeah, I think the, the Seahawks are a little overrated at three and oh, so I, I put value in Detroit in this game. All right, there you have it. We are in agreement. So a couple leans, free leans for our viewers, uh, Tennessee and Detroit. I don't know if you'll be watching this in time to play them, but you'll certainly be able to see this and see if we were right or wrong on those. But most but importantly, one, one yep. thing you can't do is watch both games without watching it at the same time because the scheduling, uh, which – doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but 4.30 and 5.15 Pacific time for the start yeah, time? Yeah, unless you want to record them. But, you know, even then I think it makes it tough because they'll they'll show you – they'll jump back and forth and show you what's going on in the other games. So they if will, you wanted to record sense. one – Yeah, it's the same network, essentially, ESPN yeah. and ABC. So Yeah. I, I like recording the Sunday night games or the Monday night games – uh, my wife wants to watch a movie in the evening. So instead I'll watch a movie with her. She goes to bed and then I'll watch the game fast forwarding through. And it takes about 30 minutes at the most to watch a full NFL game. If you got the <laughs> remote in your hand, uh, because yeah. there's just so much downtime. I, I get through a game pretty easily within 30 minutes. It's pretty entertaining. Yeah, um, it, it's it's getting harder and harder to do, especially with social media. If you have phone, your phone set the ESPN notifications and things are dinging and you know things are flashing. And uh, but uh, God bless you if you're still able to record a game and not know the score by the by the time it's over. So. Exactly. Uh, last thing to talk about, I mentioned the Aaron Rodgers debacle in, in New York. I had a feeling, I think, I know you said you think that he's, he looks, he looks fine. He looks good. 
But, um, you know, I think that he is playing out a huge contract that he was given by the Jets. You know, tore his ACL, probably should have just retired, but the only way to keep getting his $40 million a year paycheck, whatever it was, is is to play. Um, And sure enough, a very embarrassing Jets loss at home to the Broncos, uh, missing a field goal at the end. But, I mean, I think the Jets only put up a total of 10 points or something with an – with Aaron Rodgers as quarterback. I, I, you know, analyzing uh, Aaron Rodgers play again, I, I I don't see him playing that poorly. What I do see is, is a team that plays poorly. And I, I am not putting this on, on Aaron Rodgers and, and by by all likelihood that that should have been a win for them yesterday had the, the kicker not missed, I think multiple field goals in, in that game. Uh, But, but he, he's throwing the ball fine, you know, but these guys are not catching it. They're not positioning themselves. Well, they're not running the best routes. I, I think that, that they're just lacking personnel. Yeah. No, he definitely doesn't seem to be – they don't seem to be all on the same page, which, you know, I can blame the coach for that. You can blame the offensive coordinator. But, you know, in these days, especially with somebody like Aaron Rodgers, I mean, he's essentially a coach also, you know. So the responsibility yeah. is is equally on him to make sure that everybody's on the same page. He knows what it takes to prepare for an NFL season and to get everybody on the same page. So, But you also need you need the talent as well. I mean, guys are only capable of so much, you know. Well, well, well. Anyway, I'm I don't I'm 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 still saying I think he might be half checked out. Yeah, physically he looks fine. I'm just wondering mentally and and how much he's on the same page with the offensive coordinator and the coach, uh, based on what you're seeing on the field. Last thing I'll remark on, I was surprised to to see this was uh, talk about the Ravens imploding, and hopefully this won't cause Todd to jump jump back on the show. But they're the, they're the most penalized team. Baltimore Ravens, the most penalized team so far this season. And you've got John Harbaugh, you know, a Super Bowl winning coach, a, a great head coach. I, I just can't figure out how, how that can be. How, how can you have such a great coach, yet he allows his team to be the most penalized uh, in the league? Well, that, that's uh, that, that's a good question. Uh, I mean, it just goes to show how talented they are to overcome all these these penalties that that, that they accrue uh, during these games. But uh, yeah, their 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 offensive line, God, all the holding calls. Um, but you know, I mean. Again, not to get Todd involved in it uh, too much, but. You know, back in the Steeler Raven days, uh, when that was the the rivalry and the battle for for the division, um, yeah, we we always looked at Baltimore and that Ray Lewis era, Terrell Suggs, as that you know they they were trying to hurt our guys, and then they took some shots that we didn't feel were 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 right, and. Uh, They've they've had a just a history and a reputation of being just a, a little bit of a dirty team. And you know, I think a lot of that carries forward with these other the newer versions of these teams. So Yeah. Yeah, it's just that's people from Baltimore. What can you say? Dirty. <laughs> dirty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. He's not coming back. All right. Let's, let's end it there before, before he gets back. All right, everybody, let's wrap it up. Don't forget, go to Substack, check it out, subscribe for the free newsletter and uh, subscribe for Rich's picks for this upcoming weekend. Eight and three so far, 73% winning clip. We'll be back with you next week to go over Rich's picks for what are we at? Next week is week five NFL. Correct. Yeah. Wow. Season's going fast. We've already uh, one month into one full month into the season. All right. Thank you all for watching and listening to Handicap Hustle with Jim Brezzo and Richard Frazier. We'll talk to you again next week. Thank you, Jim.